This is a video on 11.3, um, chapter 11, lesson 3 of our unit 6 on ancient Rome. So um, these are the assignments that we have done so far. And after this lecture, you should be able to complete 11.3 uh, guided reading, which is about four pages, I believe. So it's a little bit longer, and this lecture might be a little bit longer. All right, so this is called The End of the Republic. And we talked about how the United States is a republic because we get to vote for our leaders. We get to choose who our leaders are. So if this means that the republic is ending in ancient Rome, does it mean that people are going to have less rights because they can't vote for their leaders? Like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? My inference is that it is a bad thing. So we've talked about how plebeians were struggling. They had increased um, poverty. There was overcrowding in the cities. Um, yes, there was the creation of a professional army, which meant that people were paid to serve in, in the army. Um, but also there were issues because military leaders were um, were fighting for power. So um, another thing that was happening is that as plebeians were, were fighting in wars, they would come back to their farms and their farms would, would be in disrepair. And um, this is a Latifundia, and a Latifundia is a wealthy Roman estate. And so the patricians had these large estates, and they would not hire plebeians to work on their farms. So not only were they collecting the plebeians' land, but they wouldn't hire them to work on their land because there were slaves. And so slaves are free labor. So why would you why would you pay for something when you can have something for free? And that was the attitude of many of the patricians. Do we like the patricians? No. Not really. So um, during this time, there were two brothers, the Gracchus brothers, uh, Tiberius and Gaius. I believe I have their names correct. So Tiberius and Gaius said, do you know what? We should give, um, we should help the poor. And other senators did not like the Gracchus brothers because many of these senators uh, had latifundias. They didn't want to give away their, their land or their or their wealth or their power. So the Gracchus brothers were killed. Tiberius and Gaius were, were killed. However, um, their ideas were not um, forgotten because the next leader was Marius. And up here you can see the head of um, someone who has kind of a maybe a, a happier face. I don't know. And then down here we have someone who has a less happy face. Um, and that's intentional. So Marius was the consul, right? And he was the son of a worker, not a patrician. He wanted to help the poor. However, under him, the government became weak, weakened. And one of his generals, Sola, moved in and um, took, over, um, took over the leadership. So under Sola, um, not a lot of good things happened. In fact, there was more um, conflict in it. There were more problems under his leadership. Um, but after him came Julius Caesar. And so the rise of Julius Caesar. Um, oh, on that note, we should go back to Sola because um, you, need to, you need to know that one of the problems under his leadership is that he gave more leadership to the Senate, to the senators and then took away power from the tribunes. And remember that these are both two different groups um, in government and that the tribunes represent the plebeians, right? And the senators represent the senators. So if he's making the tribunes weaker um, and he's making the senators more powerful, then it means that patricians get more power and it means that plebeians are weakened. Here, we can make that really small. Tribunes became much weaker. Okay, so that is um, what happened under Sola, which, okay, so just to go back, um, and I got interrupted there. Um, Julius Caesar was one of the great Roman leaders, and we're just going to talk a little bit about his accomplishments. Um, he was, uh, he won the support of the poor, um, and that's how he became, that's part of the reason that he defeated um, uh, his rival in the triumvirate, right? He was fighting against, he was in conflict with um, Pompey for leadership. But more people favored Caesar because um, because he really looked out for the poor. 
um, he created a new calendar, which is the calendar that we use today, the 12 month calendar. He established that there are 365 days in a year. Um, and he also defeated Pompey's army. So um, when we're talking about actions by Julius Caesar, he fought the Celts, he invaded Britain, um, he crossed the Rubicon, and he declared himself dictator. So that's not really cool. We don't really like dictators. Um, but because of all of the good things Julius Caesar was doing, he was able to um, be, he was, he was a kind leader for the most part. He, there were a lot of awful things he did, but he was kinder than um, some of the other um, leaders before him. And also, when we talk about reforms, we're talking about things he did to change Rome. Um, so first, he gave citizenship to many people in Roman territories. He created jobs. Um, he created settlements for landless workers. So um, moving on, um, the poor Romans whom Caesar helped may have been um, sad about what came next because there were two senators, Brutus and Cassius, who plotted to kill Caesar. They didn't like his policies. And so on March 15th, um, you can see here, this is an image of Caesar. Um, he was killed by the senators and he did not suspect that this was coming because when you plot to do something, it's a plan you have in secret or that you make in secret. Um, there's a play by William Shakespeare and one of the lines in the play about the death of Julius Caesar is beware the Ides of March, which references March 15th, the day that Julius Caesar was killed. So again, um, people were, many Romans would be sad about Caesar dying because um, because of what he did for the common person. But then people who wanted to restore the Roman Republic were probably really happy about Caesar's death. So moving on, what happened after, um, after Caesar? Well, um, there was another triumvirate. Octavian, Mark Antony, and Marcus Lepidus. Um, and Octavian was the nephew of Julius Caesar, right? So Rome was divided into three parts. Well, what happened with this triumvirate? Lepidus died, which left Mark Antony and Octavian in uh, competition for um, uh, leadership of Rome. And Mark Antony, um, fell in love with the famous Egyptian princess Cleopatra. And so uh, they were a powerful force and they united against Octavian. However, Octavian was um, ultimately more powerful and he became the next leader. So Octavian made himself dictator and um, he, um, he, would say in public that he supported the Republic, that he supported people being able to uh, vote for their leaders. But in private, he believed that he should have all of the power. That said, he did restore peace and prosperity to the Roman Empire, okay? Um, and uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of one other thing that you're a couple other things that you might need to know in order to complete 11.3. Uh, Cicero. Cicero was a well-known political leader who strongly supported representative government. And so when, when we talk about representative government, that would mean a republic, right? So Cicero and Octavian would not have the same ideas about how Rome should be um, governed. Um, so uh, the Senate Remember, the Senate is the group of uh, uh, leaders in government who represent patricians. The Senate um, uh, gave in to Octavian. They really um, gave him everything that he wanted as a, as a dictator, as a leader, because they believed that he was um, a strong leader, and also he had a very loyal army. So... Some people felt that Rome was was weakening and that Octavian was was very, very important um, for Rome to survive. So that should end or give you all of the necessary information 
or 11.3 as you're finishing your guided reading. And we will um, continue talking about Octavian, who changes his name to, um, to Augustus, to Caesar Augustus in 11.4.